I'm Jeremy Adams. I look after the ecosystem at Dagger. And today I want to tell you a story about your pipelines. And we're, of course, going to get an introduction to Dagger along the way. But your software pipelines, your CI CD pipelines, they're really a factory for your company. They're your software factory. And if the factory is running well, you're able to ship more features with better quality, faster, and everyone's happier because things are working. And it does start out happy. Usually things start simple. You understand your application. You understand how to build it, how to test it. But things get complicated. And as you go along, the platform team realizes, well, they need to specify some very particular things, maybe for security requirements or just to make sure that things work consistently. But it turns out at the same time, developers are trying to go as fast as they can. And they're trying all sorts of tools so they can run things locally. And soon we get into the situation where something works on my laptop, but it doesn't work in CI. Or it works in CI, but not on my laptop. I can't run the authoritative build on my own laptop. I have to push and see what happens. And it gets worse. As the applications get more complex, as time goes on, you build up a lot of CI scripts, a lot of CI YAML. And if you're on Jenkins, a lot of Groovy. And just to show you, this is a real file that I actually got from a, a user and anonymized. Um, it can get this crazy. And this is not an easy thing to understand or change. No one really wants to touch a thousand lines, two thousand lines of YAML. It really slows your factory down. And it starts to have unexpected problems that are really hard to diagnose, to debug, and fix. So your factory is not running as well as it used to, and people are not having fun. We talk about push and pray. This is a symptom that you might see if you're in a situation like this or you're on this path. Whether you're a developer working on your code or you're a DevOps engineer or a platform engineer trying to make the CI platform better, you find yourself having a system so complex that you just have to push your changes and see what happens. And maybe you push and 15 minutes go by, half an hour, maybe an hour if it's a complex system, and yet another failure. And again, very difficult to diagnose, and this can happen to anyone in the organization. So our factory has gotten off track. We need to retool the factory, as they say. But luckily, we're working with software here. We're not talking about an actual physical factory, thank goodness. We can just reboot our factory. It's just software. We can change it. And we have all of the building blocks that we need. Though today, they're often not coordinated together in the best way. They're in some silos. But let's just see what we have. Let's take inventory. We have amazing programming languages and ecosystems that we use to build our applications. We've got the Node.js ecosystem, the Java ecosystem, the Golang ecosystem, Python ecosystem, on and on. And code is way better than YAML at expressing complex logic. And today, with the rise of AI co-pilots and intelligent uh, IDEs, pretty much anyone can write code 
and be successful with it. So we should take advantage of that. Another piece is containers. We've had containers around for 10 years now, more, uh, you know, in a way that in, in from Docker days, Kubernetes days, right? It's been, it, they've been made much easier to use and we use them all the time. And they give us great advantages in our applications like isolation, the fact that they're built up in layers. So caching is really easy. The fact that containers are immutable. So we know that we can rely on a particular container that was built. We should use those as well. And we've already got CI servers in place. They're connected up to Git. We're able to reliably trigger runs, builds, whatever we need today. It's just that this interface, this whole YAML thing or the groovy thing, it's not really working out for us. And we have more powerful development machines. Our laptops are way more powerful than they've ever been. And we should really put those to use. But what we need is something to bring those all together. We need a DevOps operating system. And that's what we're building at Dagger. As we look at some of these pieces, you start seeing, well, we need to work with some of the fundamental objects in CI. We need to work with containers so we can create environments. Like here's a build on Node.js. Over here, we're doing something, uh, some tests in Java. We need to be able to separate these things and reliably recreate them. We need to work with directories, like a directory full of source code uh, or a directory or a file coming out as built artifacts. We need to handle secrets, pulling things from Git, on and on. We need all those primitives. And the way that these work when you're using them with code is they work in functions, which makes perfect sense. You want to take in your source code, do some work to it, a build, some tests, et cetera. And then maybe you take just a portion of what you just made, maybe just the, the artifacts, in this case, maybe a website, and then you put that maybe in a container that you will then ship to production. And you want to configure that container, maybe with a port that's open so that you can run your website. This is very expressive. This is very powerful. And these, this function model scales because you can link one function to the next and create very complex, but debuggable, understandable pipelines. And now lots of folks on the team can help contribute because it's a language they already understand and use day to day. Also, you'd like to be able to capture when you've got something really good, you've got a set of functions that maybe represent your build process, or you finally figured out just how to do signing of your containers uh, or something else with your security or your compliance process. You wanna be able to capture that and share that in the organization. Well, you can take a set of functions and put those into a module, and then you can share those all across your team. If you've got a module that's appropriate for everybody, you can share those with the Daggerverse. And the way the Daggerverse works is it's a whole set, hundreds of modules that have come from the community, from Dagger, from Dagger partners. And you can see in here, uh, there's actually some great modules from Puzzle as well. So definitely check out Daggerverse when you're looking for some functionality that you want to put to work. The other piece that we mentioned that was a problem was the difference between the split between local on your laptop, a developer's laptop, or a platform engineer's laptop working on the CI itself and what's actually running in CI. We need to bring those together. And so the idea with Dagger is we write it once and we can run it the same both locally and CI. And we saw a build function easy, earlier. Imagine on my local machine in the CLI at the top, 
I might just call dagger call build. I'm calling the build function. Over in Jenkins, I can do the same thing. GitHub Actions, I can do the same thing. So I start to create the ability to run exactly the same thing, the same containerized pipeline locally or on any CI, which means I can move from an old CI to a new CI, or I can manage that situation we all get in sometimes where we need to have both systems running at the same time. And then you need to be able to visualize these things, right? Part of the problem with the YAML or the Groovy was we just had logs and logs and logs, and it was very difficult to tell what was happening or how to fix things. So we've got Dagger Cloud available too, and so you can visualize, you can share with your team uh, and work on things together to debug things. So as an example of that, I'm going to go to Dagger Cloud and look at a run that I've got actually uh, active right now. And this is me building a Java project. And as I dig in here, I can see I'm doing quite a bit. I'm creating containers and I'm executing my Java command inside the container. I'm opening up a port to the world here and running things as a service. Oh, look, I've started another, a MongoDB. I've got secrets. So I'm handling all of those primitives that we might need to work with. And as we go down here, you can see there's quite a bit happening. And here I'm actually creating a local development environment. So I've decided to use a module here that helps me share all of these services with my local host. And I can actually take a look. Oh. It's a great module that's from the Daggerverse. And I can go and learn how that works and use it. OK, so now you've gotten an overview, I hope, of some of the, the problem, some of the way that we're looking to, to solve things. So now I'll just do the tiniest bit of a demo just to give you a, a further feel for things. So if you go to docs.dagger.io, you'll find the quick start. I encourage everybody to join the Dagger Discord, chat with us, but also go to the docs, try this quick start. It'll give you a great hands-on feeling for Dagger. This is the code from the quick start. I've got the TypeScript version, but you could try it in Go or in Python, whatever you prefer, and there's more SDKs in the works. So the way this, uh, if you take a look at this, it's a module with a set of functions that work together to build and test and publish a project. So here's our friend, the build function again. And you can see, well, my IDE is working, which is great. So I can see that this takes in a directory, my source code, and is gonna return to me a container. I take in my source code, and it looks like I'm using another function here already. So I can take, I can kind of look at this. I'll click to this. Oh, look, I can jump. So this is just code. And I can jump to see what my build environment is. Oh, I see. This is going to actually get a Node.js container, and it's going to set it up for me with some passes so that it runs more efficiently. And then it's going to install my dependencies in it. Got it. That makes sense. And then I can actually use that up here in my build function and, and run on top of my dependencies a build and then take out one directory, just the one directory, which is my website build, and store it in a variable which I can then pass in to another container here and put this in the spot where Nginx would look for web content and open up port 80. So I'm here in the project. And to see these different functions that we've just been looking at, I can run Dagger functions. Let me open this up a little bigger. And you can see I've got the build, which uses the build environment. I can publish, 
which I don't think we looked at too much, but you can see it up here where I'm actually doing, I'm actually publishing a container that I've built and I'm pushing it to a registry. This is the TTLSH registry. And I've also got a test in here as well where I'm running NPM run and I've got some unit tests. So I can run any of these things from code. I can call them from other code, like you saw me calling build env from the build function, but I can also run them here. I can say dagger call build, and it's going to tell me if I get something wrong. In this case, it says, hey, you need some source code. I said, oh, okay, no problem. I can do that. Give it some source code. I'm gonna say my source is equal to the current directory. So I have the code right here. And you can see right away, I've got a trace happening, which I can jump here and I can go look at this in Dagger Cloud if I want to, or I can just look at it here in my terminal. And you can see we're sitting here and we're building our website. And it told me, I returned a container. What do you wanna do now? So I might say, well, I'm glad that you've got a website built. I actually wanna see how it's gonna run. So I could actually take this container and I could run it as a service and I could actually bring this up. And I'm gonna say that I wanna run it on 8080 on my local host and I wanna map that back to port 80 in the container, which is what we opened up inside of our container here. So now I can see, you know, once this comes up, I'll be able to jump into that container and take a look at it and debug it, for example. So additionally, I can do things like maybe I'm maybe I'm not getting all of my content into my container and I wanna see what's happening. So here I could actually take my container and start up a terminal. So now I'm starting a container and I'm gonna jump inside and I'm gonna take a look and see if there's anything, if everything is looking right. So here I could say, well, what's in here? Okay, let's look in user, share, nginx, HTML, aha, indeed, we've got our index HTML and we've got some of our assets that are in here. And let's take a look in here. And let's see if we have anything that's got dagger in it in here. And indeed we've got down inside the assets directory, we've got some pages in here as well that we could we could start to see, oh wow, this is how my app, how my Vite application actually got put together. I can start looking at things and debugging them and exploring that as well. And that hopefully gives you just a little bit of a taste of some of the things that you can do with Dagger. We're gonna see some more as we get into Christoph's and to Gerhard's presentation. So I would just leave you with this. Definitely join the Dagger Discord, come and chat with us, tell us what you wanna do, what you're working on, and definitely try that quick start. Try the quick start on docs.dagger.io. And I can't wait to see what all of you build with Dagger. And like I said, I hope I can be with you uh, in person next time. And merci filmao. <laughs>